Okay, this sermon is entitled, Good Works Must, Will, or Should. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 14 reads, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are altogether become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Now, in most cases, whenever you're dealing with a false prophet, you'll find that these people are culpable of rhetorical weaponization. And the difference between a false gospel and the true gospel, in many cases, is simple semantics. And... Whenever listening to a false prophet, it's easy to spot a cleverly systematized, deceitfully applied, poor choice of words in how they articulate their so-called gospel. And when it comes to Calvinists, Arminians, and Lordshippers, these people fall into the category of must when it comes to good works. They'll claim that you must have the works. They misinterpret and misapply James 2, And they'll say things like, you can't just believe, you also have to have good works to either be saved or to prove you're saved. And this is the position of Roman Catholicism. Then you have a more deceptive version of this, where these people claim that you will do the works. They'll say, well, we're not saved by works, but if you're truly saved, or if you truly believe, you will have the works. Now, on one hand, you have front-loading works into the gospel, and then you have back-loading. And it's really all the same thing, because at the end of the day, a person has to have works to validate their false salvation. Now, in free grace theology, we don't teach the must or the will. We teach should. In other words, in free grace, you don't have to have good works. You're not going to necessarily automatically have good works. They're not required, but because we're saved and we have appreciation for our salvation, we should do good works. In other words, in free grace theology, good works are optional, volitional, and can be done with the correct motive. So let's turn over to Ephesians chapter 2, and let's take a look at a few verses. Now in verses 8 and 9, the context is about salvation. It reads... For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. When it comes to salvation, it's entirely by grace, through faith in Christ, it's not of works, and therefore boasting is excluded. Now in verse 10, we're not dealing with salvation. We're dealing with the Christian walk, perhaps discipleship, and the post-salvation experience. And it reads... For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now notice the language carefully. It says we should walk in them. The stupid unsaved devils out there will tell you that you have to walk in good works. You have to have good works to verify or to validate your faith. Yet, according to the Bible, it just tells us that we should walk in good works and That's the free grace position. Now here's the conclusion of the matter. If works are required, it's a works-based salvation. Only in free grace are works not salvifically required. And like I said, they're optional and they can be done with the proper motivation. Now turn over to Titus chapter 3. We see a few more verses on this. It reads in verse 7 that being justified by his grace we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Now, notice the order here. A saved person has believed in God, they've believed on Jesus Christ, and now they're being exhorted to maintain good works. They don't have to do these works. They're not part of salvation. They're just something that we should do after we're saved, and they are good and profitable unto men. So that's the difference between free grace theology and every other soul-damning works-based theology or soteriology out there. In free grace, we should do good works. The false salvation systems are either you must have the works or you will have the works. 
And if you must or will have the works, you're basically implying that the work of Jesus Christ at the cross was insufficient and was not enough to save somebody. And that's why people that hold to these two positions, if that's what they've always believed, they're 100% unsaved and going to hell. And that's why they need to be called out for the stupid devils that they are. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.